hey, we can change the world. So let's go. We can do it. Matter of fact, we will. Yes, sir. This world bleeding in my God can heal. Yes, sir. Every time when I'm out in the field, the heartbeat from the people saying, we some real. Let's go. Man, we can change the world. We can. Got to do it for the boys and girls. The future. God has a sentence for your life. He sends you out to spread light. Like, so we, we, we can change the world. Yes, sir. We can change the world. We can change the world. Yeah, yeah. We can change the world. Hey everybody, welcome to Tell Me Your Story. Of course, my name is John Simmons. So thankful you've joined us on the program today. A special guest we have with us, Michelle Paget, who is a founder of Redemptive Fire Ministries. And she has a number of stories, some she's already shared with me before we got going, that are just going to knock your socks off and fill you with faith for Jesus Christ and what he can do in and through your life. So I want to invite Michelle to the program today. Michelle, how are you? Hi, John. How are you? Hi, everybody. Nice to be on here. Nice to be with you and finally meet you. <laughs> yes, and I, I'm very well. Thanks for asking. And I know that uh, you have so many stories and I don't know really where to start. But what I want to do is just sort of encourage people that uh, when they're listening to you to just know that God has miraculous things that he can do in and around us and just be open to the idea of God moving in and through our lives. So as we get going in our conversation today, Michelle, I just want you to sort of let everybody know about your ministry and how it got started. Sure. Uh, as you said, uh, John, uh, the name of the ministry is called Redemptive Fire Ministries International. And uh, what I am is I'm actually a revivalist or a reformer. And I travel the world and I preach the gospel, uh, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, you know, all the wonderful things that yeah. they have uh, in the Bible. And then some, you know, it's that time that we just kind of go after it, you know. And um, so it, it all started because my life in itself is a miracle. I'm a walking, talking, breathing miracle. Um, and my how, where do I start? <laughs> it's like, I have so many miracle stories from my birth to on. It's just amazing how God's uh, saved me and, you know, set me free. And, you know, but um, for myself personally, I'll just give you part of my testimony, which will be found in my book that will be coming out in the springtime. Uh, we're trying to get it, push it forward. We'll see what happens. And um, so I was brutally assaulted and left to die in July 22nd of 1994. And I was six and a half months pregnant with my second child. And I was beaten in my head with a baseball bat and kicked uh, in my back, neck, and in my head and uh, drug in the woods to die. And um, I was, the Lord saved me. I ended up uh, making my way, doing a bear crawl to somebody's home uh, who closed the door. It was 12 midnight, closed the door on me. And, um, I made my way across the, the street, looked up at a light and I said, dear God, you can save my baby, but just don't save me. And I had no speech. I had, uh, no vision. I had no hearing in my left ear and I was paralyzed on the upper left quadrant on my body. And, uh, I was contracting, uh, just then this big, huge Nubian angel picked me up. I, I still to this day don't know who it was. So I'm just going to say it was an angel. It was the <laughs> angel of the Lord that came and picked me up and carried me to safety. And in the morning I ended up, uh, my neighbors found me on the steps of, of by my house, uh, yelling, uh, motioning for help. And they took me to the hospital and um, they rushed me um, lifelike. And I was in ICU, uh, intensive care unit for over 10 days. Uh, they didn't know if I was going to live or die. They didn't know if my baby was going to live or die. But I knew from what the, what the angel had told me that night that my baby was going to live and that, um, you know, everything was going to be okay eventually, that everything was going to eventually be okay, even though they had 17 doctors. Uh, they did MRIs, CAT scans, everything that they could. And um, they told my mom that I would never be normal again. They said that the processes of my brain on the left side of my brain were completely um, destroyed. And, uh, and I knew because of what the Lord showed me, I knew that the devil was a liar. And I happened the day they were discharging me from the hospital. I grabbed the pen and I wrote on the paper, the devil's a liar. And I stuck yeah. it in the doctor's face to show them like, look, 
I'm going to be the miracle testimony that's going to, that you're going to see, because you're going to find out eventually who I am and why, what God did in my life. And you're going to see it for yourself. Well, it took time. The first thing that came back was actually my speech um, 10 days later. Uh, then over time, different processes started coming back. Uh, my vision started coming back. Uh, my hearing started coming back. Uh, 2011, my hearing came back in a meeting in, uh, in Phoenix, Arizona. I was in a James Maloney meeting and um, I just, by the spirit of God, I said, I reach up and I grab my new ear uh, out of the body parts room in heaven. And I pretended like I popped my ear in by faith <laughs> and my hearing popped open and I was, I got my hearing. Um, yeah. And then the processes came back and started coming back. Um, 2014, February 14th, 2014, my skull literally grew out on Valentine's day in a pastor's hand right here in Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah, I have so many amazing stories, John. Those are incredible. <laughs> yeah, most people don't experience miracles like that one story. time. Yeah, most What's people don't that? experience most people don't experience miracles like that one time. And you have a handful <laughs> of them before the ministry even gets going. Sounds like. <laughs> yeah, I can't even explain to you. It's just like one thing after another in my life, how it's happened. And my daughter living, that was an absolute miracle because yeah. they said had he kicked over uh, or hit over a half a, a half a hair over that he would have um, paralyzed me instantaneously mm. and my daughter would have died. Um, but I always knew that she was my miracle baby and it's continued. It continued yeah. even after me that my daughter, you know, her life became a miracle. I raised my girls in the church as a single mom. And um, yes, they walked away. We did for a season and they walked away. But what happened was the story, like I told you about my grandson, uh, I really feel that people need to hear this right now, especially with everything that's going on with COVID-19 and respiratory infections and stuff. Let me tell you, we serve a miracle working God. We serve a miracle working God. Do you see these pictures? Let me tell you something. January 2nd of this past year, that's my baby grandson who was one year or one month old at that time. He was diagnosed with RSV. He was diagnosed with sepsis and he was diagnosed with pneumonia. And his vitals were completely shutting down. And let me tell you something. The crazy thing is I was at a meeting in California, in San Diego, California. So this goes to show you there's no time or distance in the spirit realm. I was at a meeting in California, did not even know what was going on. My daughter hadn't been able to call me because it was such an emergency she was dealing with. And he actually died in her arms. And... Um, I was in a meeting and the Lord prompted me. I was in a revival meeting. The Lord prompted me and said, pray now. And I started praying in the spirit. He said, go into your secret place. So I had no place to go, but I always go to the restroom and pray. And he started giving me visions of my daughter, my grandson. He said, the devil is trying to take her out with suicide. And I just went to warring and I was like, not on my dime and not on my time, <laughs> Satan. You are not taking anyone out of my bloodline. You couldn't take me out of my mom's womb. You couldn't take my life. You couldn't take my daughter and you're not taking anybody in my family. And so I went to sleep that night. And when I went to sleep that night, I had a dream that I was Wonder Woman. And in the dream, it's pretty crazy, but in the dream, I was defeating the spirit of death. And yeah. I was stabbing death in its head and cutting off its neck. And I had the, I had it on a, on the spear, on the, on the, on the, on the, uh, what you call it? And a javelin. Yeah, and I, you. I held it up on the sword and I had the head of the, uh, of the demon of death. Well, Whoa. just then my roommate said I was speaking in tongues and warring in tongues. My phone rings. It's my daughter and she's screaming and crying. And she's like, mommy's not going to make it. Mom, I said, whoa, wait, what's going on here? And the lion of the tribe of Judah that was inside of me, everything inside of me just started roaring. And I said to my daughter, I said, Janae Mariah, I said, I hear the Lord say to you right now, 
Are you going to accept him back as your Lord and Savior? Because this baby's life depends upon your salvation. Are you ready to accept Jesus Christ back into your heart right now? And my daughter, she she got a little scared. And she I said, I pray the spirit of conviction to fall upon you now. And uh, she accepted the Lord back into her life. I had to fear her a little bit. And uh, I said to her, now where is the baby at? So she showed me, and they had put him on comfort rest. So, John, I don't know if you know what comfort rest is, but comfort rest is actually when they put mm. a person on right before they're getting ready to pass into glory. Mm. And his vitals went down. Everything, it, it, I mean, his everything was next to nothing. And I said, go over there right now. And I said, you put me on uh, on video I said, uh, put me on the screen so I can see him. I said, and I'm going to have you lay your hands on that baby. And you're going to resurrect your own child from the dead. Oh, so my daughter, with little faith that she had, but she, she, she had the fear of the Lord at that time because Mama Bear was roaring. The Mama Lioness was just roaring out of me. And uh, she went over and she actually laid her hands on. And we started seeing a change in the vitals. And they came in in two hours and said, we don't know what happened here, but his vitals are actually going back to normal. Um, we don't know how this happened. And Janae's like, well, um, I believe it's a miracle. And I told her, I said, I don't want you getting on Facebook or anything like that and telling everybody. And I don't want you to cry and get in fear because you know what, Janae, right now he's just with Jesus. He's getting his orders. He's getting his assignments from heaven of what he's called to do here on the earth. I said, but you watch and see what my God's about to do because we have a God who, who we serve who's a miracle working God. He's a promise keeper and he will never let you down. I said, he's never let us down. Has he ever let us down in our life? She said, no. I said, and he's not going to let you down now. And she said, well, mom, if something happens to him, I'm going to take my own life too. I said, oh, no, you're not. Devil's not taking both of you. Not on my time. Not on my time, devil. You're not going to do it. And I just went to warring. And I contacted uh, just some private friends who are my intercessors. Uh, and I said, look, I just, all I said was pray in the spirit. I didn't say what it was. I didn't say anything. I said, just pray in the spirit. 911 stat. Everybody prayed. It was like seven, seven of my intercessors that prayed. And uh, we watched as this baby started coming back to life. And I went to a meeting that night at the same revival meeting in San Diego I was at. And I went to the person who uh, was holding the meeting. And I said, uh, I took the picture and I said, hey, I said, uh, my grandson is fighting for his life. I said, can you please believe with me that that it is done. It is finished. Like right. it, death has been paid on the cross and there is no, and no, you are not going to have this baby because he has a mighty call of God on his life. And his name is Marlon. And his name actually means little warrior. Wow. So God was showing he's a little warrior. And right there, he <laughs> just actually just celebrated December 2nd. He just celebrated his first birthday. So Amen. he brought one round one. Uh, and we are looking forward <laughs> to the mighty call of God on his life, John. Because I know he's going to be preaching the gospel and laying hands on the sick and raising the dead. And, uh, you know, God show me the call of God that was on his life. And uh, yeah. that's just two of the crazy stories. <laughs> crazy, but miraculous stories that so many people are going to be encouraged to hear. Uh, we like to bring people yeah. on to tell them not only how God has worked in their life, but how they can find God's plan and purpose for their life. You mentioned that Marlon has a call on his life. You have a call on your life as well. Yeah, I see you. you're stirred up. You're passionate not only about Jesus, but seeing other people bring Jesus into their life and move through the spirit. So I'm curious how you got yourself into a place where you walk in the kind of passion for Christ that you do today. From trial and error and from going from glory to glory, just seeing the hand of God move in so many miracles from finances to cars to, you know, healings and deliverance and just signs and wonders. And I mean, even here in my home, I get angelic presence. I get 
you know, just signs and wonders. I get things that happen. Uh, you know, with Christmas coming up, I'm going to tell you a beautiful uh, miracle Christmas story, John. So one year when my girls were little, uh, this is when I, it was in the 90s. And um, I didn't have a lot of money. My kid's father had beat me and taken all the money. And so I didn't have any money for my kids for Christmas. And so I was like, God, I, I don't know what to do. And this was in my younger years and my faith years, you know. And I heard the Lord say, beloved, do as the widow. And I said, oh, okay. And we were going to church and I didn't want to, I didn't want to sound desperate or tell anybody what was going on. And nobody knew, nobody knew right. what was going on. And I heard the Lord say, give of the widow's might. And I took my, my purse that day and I took and I dumped all the change that I had in my purse that day into the, into the offering. And I put my hands up and I said, okay, God, I trust you. And I believe right. you, you are a miracle working God in Yes, my children are little, but you know what? They deserve to have good things in life. They deserve to have presents. They deserve to have, you know, the gifts that come from heaven from you, God. And I know that you're not going to leave us nor forsake us because it says in your word. And I took my Bible and I literally stood on top of my Bible and I started decreeing and I started declaring the word of the Lord over miracles, signs and wonders that he is going to do what he said he's going to do and that he will never let us down. And so we go home from church and I'm in the kitchen. I was like, okay, you know what? I got stuff to make Christmas cookies and we're just going to make some Christmas cookies and we're just going to celebrate this way. So me and the girls are in there. And I put the Christmas music on and I was like, okay, we're going to make, I'm going to make the best of this with tears in my eyes, basically, you know? Yeah. And I'm thinking, God, and we lived in the inner city project. Okay. Mm. I, I, we lived in the inner city project and I was just giving of everything that I have, like just the oil that was inside of me. I was just giving of it, just giving of it. And I'm in the kitchen and all of a sudden the doorbell rings. And I said to my oldest daughter, I said, who was four at the time, I said, Jocelyn, I said, do me a favor, go look out the, the, the door and, and tell mommy at the window and tell mommy who's out there. And so she looks out and she runs back and she says, mommy, mommy, there's people out there and they have big, big, big bag, garbage bags, and they have a Christmas tree, mom. And I was like, okay, Maybe she's watching too much uh, cartoons or something like that. Right, right, you know? right. And so I was like, I went to the door, I looked out the peak hole, and I said, hello? And they said, is this Michelle? And I go, yeah. And they said, Merry Christmas. And I go, Merry Christmas. Christmas. I said, oh, I, think you have the, I think you have the wrong home. They said, no, 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 no. No, we're, we're, your, we're your secret angels. Right. I said, wait, wait, what? Excuse so I me? opened my door <laughs> and they come in and they had three huge garbage bags, huge garbage bags, like the lawn kind, you know, lawn and garden yeah. kind, and it's full of brand new toys and clothes for my children. And they turn around and they give me um, a hundred dollar gift certificate mm. to go get clothes for myself. And they give me a $50 gift certificate to go uh, to the grocery store and get a Christmas dinner. And I didn't have a Christmas tree. I didn't have so anything. Good. Here they come with the Christmas tree, the Christmas stand, the lights, the bulbs, everything. And all I could do, John, was sit in the middle of the floor and cry out, thank you, Lord. Yeah. What an amazing thank story. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I have many stories like this. Yeah. <laughs> let me let me ask you because yeah. I love I love your energy. I love these stories. They are so encouraging and so infrequent sometimes when you talk to people about what God's done in their life. But for me as I'm listening to you, the question that pops up into my mind, Michelle, is that you've been beaten, you've been part of your skull's gone, your kids almost die, your grandson almost die. For so many people, that might be feel like too much, and you're coming out of this stronger than before, but was there a point where you were 
down and out where you were just like, this is not, you, this just, I, I heard you say like, Lord, just take my life. You know, like what was it like to transition from a place like that to a place where you know that God's mission and purpose for you is to help other people through the gospel? Wow. Thank you for asking that question. Um, you know, I knew the day that I was laying on that ground half dead, I heard the voice of God and he told me that everything was going to be okay and that he was going to restore everything that the enemy stole from me and that everyone and the enemy stole from my life and stole from my children's life. And I've always held on to that little string of hope. But there's been times, I can't lie, there's been times throughout my journey that I've wanted to throw in the towel. And I actually did for five years. I tried to walk away from the Lord for five wow. years. Uh, my kids and I were told to leave a church because I was white. Mm. And um, and uh, and then we were uh, ostracized from the white church because my children are biracial. And as a result of it, I said, God, here I am a single mom with two, yeah. two kids. And I'm coming to your house of healing. I'm coming to your house of where worship. I'm coming to get fed by you. I'm trying to get, you know, get the orphan out of me, basically, you know, and find love. And uh, we were told to leave. And for five years, five years, I stayed away. And mm. what happened was I had some men actually who were my workers here in, uh, in the valley. And every time they would see me, they would come and pray for me. I'd let them open up a, a, a men's halfway home, Christian halfway home in one of our homes. And uh, they would gather around and pray for me. And they were like, you're coming back. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I was like, you will never see me step foot in a church ever again in my life. <laughs> and let me tell you, they would gather around me. And I'm like, guys, don't waste your time. You're yeah. wasting your time because I'll never serve the Lord again. I'm done. Like, I'm straight up done. Like I gave him my all and look what he did. Right. Like, That's how I would have thought I too. I got kicked out of a church because I was white. Like how many times has this happened? You know? It's incredible. <laughs> and, and, and the thing was is that the, the lady who did it, um, she originally, when she took us in, she said, God has called you to our church to be a bridge, to bridge the races. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it used the exact same person that said it, but it's okay. I forgave her. And, you know, I had to walk in so much love and forgiveness. Mm. Like my whole life has been so consumed in walk, learning how to walk in the power of forgiveness. Yeah. Like even my kid's father, the one that left me to die in the woods, 2002, the Lord, um, I, 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 I sent my kids away and I said, you know what? I'm not leaving my bedroom until I know you for real. I'm like, I want to know you even more than I know you now. I know you by religion and I know I've heard your voice, but I don't know you like I, like I need to know you. Yeah. And I got in my room and I stayed in my room for three days. And I said, I'm not coming out until you visit me or until you, you send me a sign, send me something. Either you take me out now. If you don't take me out now, then it, let me have some kind of encounters where I can encounter you and I'll know you in a deeper and more intimate way. And I got taken it. I got taken to heaven. And when I got taken to heaven, I saw the gates and I heard the voice of God say, you can't come in because you ha have not forgiven. You've tried to forget, but you haven't forgiven. And I said, but I have. He said, no, you have not. He said, I, got, I have an assignment. He said, go down there. I want you to find your kid's father. And I want you to walk in the power of forgiveness. And I said, well, how do I do it? He said, just as I told David, and I gave him five stones to slay the giant Goliath. Now is your time to slay your Goliath. Mm -hmm. And I was like, ooh, okay. Now this is eight years later, okay? This is like way later. And yeah. I'm like, oh man, I haven't seen this man in how many years? And I'm going to just go slay my Goliath. Right. And, 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 and you know what? Um, two days later, this happened on my hand. I, uh, I severed the nerve, the vein, the tendon, the artery. I had 155 stitches. I lost uh, two and a half pints of blood. They had to give me a blood transfusion. Almost lost my life again. And um, to be honest with you, I know without a shadow of a doubt 
had I not agreed and told God, yes, yes, I will walk in love and forgiveness. I know without a shadow of a doubt, I would have went to hell that day. Mm. I know without a shadow of a doubt. I get it. I get the hospital. I have more encounters with, with the angelic presence, with beings in my room huh. who gave me the assignment. I got out of the hospital. I get out of the hospital. I go down. July 22nd was the day that he assaulted me and left me to die. July mm -hmm. 22nd of 2002, I drove to his father's house. I said, can you please have your son there at 222 in the afternoon? Because I need to speak to him. And they were like shocked. They're like, what do you mean? Like, she's right. coming out of nowhere. And I yeah, said, Yeah, where you been? Right. <laughs> I have to do something. So I literally went that day and I sat at the table and I faced my Goliath. He came in and, you know, the fear was trying to grip me that, you know, the devil was trying to say, No, you're afraid of him like you've mm -hmm. always been. And I was like, No. I have no fear. I'm, I'm full of faith. I have no fear. You know, <laughs> I'm casting down all the fear, all the vain imaginations in my mind. And so I sit at this table and I say to him, I say, Butch, I want you to know that I forgive you for everything that you have ever done to me and our children, for everything you've done, that, that you stabbed me, that you set me, set the blankets on fire that you beat my head in with a baseball bat, that you locked me in closets and, and all the things that you did to me, I forgive you for everything that you have done. And he just sat there for a minute. And then the Lord quickened me and he said, now I want you to ask him if there's anything you've ever done that needs forgiveness for. Mm. And so I said to him, I said, I'm asking you to please forgive me if there's anything that I've ever done to hurt you because that is not the intent of my heart and I want God's very best for you in everything in all areas of your life. And then I heard the Lord even more, John, and he said, now lead my son unto me. Mm. And so that day sitting at the table on the anniversary day of the day that he assaulted me and left me to die, that the enemy tried to take me out. I led this man to the Lord. Unbelievable. That's just an average so, day for you, Michelle. Uh, just yeah, <laughs> I know I'm a very unusual person. <laughs> hey, no, I love the unusual. Uh, all the stories in the Bible, uh, people walking in faith are all very unusual. I'm going to show some pictures on the screen. Uh, some of the things that you go around and do through your ministry, uh, people can find you on social media or on the, your website, victoriousmichelle.com. Uh, yeah. You said you, as you said, you go around and you pray for the sick and you see people healed and you see people delivered. And um, <laughs> I'm very, very it, you know, I'm just so encouraged by some of your testimonies today. Uh, some of the ones that I've seen online as well have been very encouraging. And one in particular that I would like to talk to you about today is one that has to do with this picture here. You see the book of the Illuminati <laughs> getting burned in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, you know, barbecue pit there. So I would like to know, Michelle, can you tell me about the testimony of the time someone, you saw someone delivered from witchcraft? Cause that's not something that I've ever seen personally. Oh, really? Oh, that's yeah. a daily thing for me. <laughs> okay, let's hear it. <laughs> um, well, let's see. Uh, one of the craziest stories I'll tell you about. Okay, so um, they had asked me to come and pray. I had actually just gone to a meeting to sit in the back. I had just come back from an overseas trip, and I was sitting at the back of the room, and a uh, pastor came out in, in – uh, I was in leadership in the ministry – uh, but they came back and they wanted me to go pray for people. And so I stepped up to the front to pray. And this girl comes up to me and she looks at me and she go, and she's a, she was a, a, a thicker girl, a very long hair down to a, like past her butt. And um, she says, uh, you can't push me over. And I just look at her and I said, oh, I'm not going to push you over. I said, but I can't control the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit wants to do in your life. I said, so if the Holy Spirit makes you slain, that's the Holy Spirit. So I, I had one of my catchers go and stand behind. Uh, he's worked with me before. 
and he knows exactly what happens usually. <laughs> the Holy right. Spirit whacks the wicked one. See ya. <laughs> and sometimes he <laughs> whacks him in the glory. And so what happened was um, I went to lay hands on her, and the Lord said, don't put your hands on her. He said, step back and just, uh, just allow me to move. Yeah. And so I went to step back, and I started just ministering to her, and I just started ministering and calling out her identity. You know, not just calling out the witchcraft, not just calling out the, you know, the bad things, but I want to call out the good things in her. So I put my hands up and I was like, in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And she starts going back and forth. The next thing you know, she goes slain on the ground. And when she goes slain on the ground, she starts wiggling and swirling around. She's looking like a snake on the ground. <laughs> and all of a sudden she starts howling like a wolf. And I'm like thinking, dear God, what is this? I'm tired. I just got off of a 24 hours on a plane. And all of a sudden now I'm, I'm having to deal with this. I didn't, I didn't ask for this. <laughs> and the Lord's like, did I, did I not tell you, beloved, to be ready in season and out of season? And like, oh, I apologize to you. And so I just, I, you know, I just, I just. Uh, you know, cancel the assignments of death and witchcraft on her life. Uh, there was a lot in the generational bloodline that I saw because uh, sometimes the Lord will, sh I'll get visions and I'll see them at different ages, a child at different ages. And I'll be able to see like, okay, four years old, this came in. Uh, seven years old, you played with a Ouija board, and that's how this came in. You know, 12 years old, you were molested or raped, and that's how this came in. And so I just started, like, uh, calling um, calling out the things and then calling in the identity and taking the fragmented parts of her soul and bringing her soul into oneness. And as I did that, <clears throat> the Lord told me, he said, I want you to stand on her hair. And I was like, oh, God, I wouldn't want anybody standing on my hair. And she had really, really long hair. So I did. I just went over and I just was obedient. And I just stood on the edge of her hair. And he said, yeah. when you stand on the edge of her hair, you're releasing my glory. And I was like, okay. you know how people believe that your glory comes from your hair. Well, he said, it's under your feet. The enemy's under your feet. He said, but this, you're, you're releasing my glory. And I was like, Okay, so I just went over and I, I stepped on the edge of her hair. And as I did, she stopped moving all around like a snake. And then I could just minister love. She started weeping and crying. And then the Lord said, just go wrap your arms around her. She needs a mother's hug. She needs a mother's love. And so I just went over and I just wrapped my arms around her. And I just said, you know, I, I want you to know that I love you. Mm -hmm. And I want you to, and I said, look into my eyes. I said, Jesus loves you. Yeah. Jesus loves you. And I just want to encourage somebody today that Jesus loves you. And there's nothing that you can ever do in your life that will separate you from the love of God. There's nothing that you can ever do that will make him run away from you because he's chasing you down each and every day. He's chasing us down and he's saying, that's mine right there. That one is mine. I want that one right there. But it's up to you to surrender to his love. And when you do, let me tell you something. It's not always going to be a cakewalk. As you can tell, my life is not a cakewalk. <laughs> right. But I can tell you it's worth it. Yeah, it's absolutely. worth it. His love is worth it. Yeah, your testimony the is fruit of the spirit, It's worth it. Indeed. The idea of what you said to that woman was, I want to pray the best in you. I want to bring the best in you out is something that I totally yeah. connect with. It's so many times we focus on the negative of so, so, what someone's gone through. All we did was dwell on the negative things about your injuries and in the, in the battles your grandson faced. If all we did is dwell on that, we would never leave our couch. Uh, but instead we focus on God's redemptive healing and his power to bring us through those things. And so in your exactly. ministry, redemptive fiery, uh, you have breakthrough Academy, which I'm, I assume is a way for you to help encourage people in these types of situations. Can you tell us more about how your ministry encourages and teaches others to live this way sure actually uh, uh Vic, it's called victorious michelle and in it i have a program called miraculous breakthrough academy i offer four weeks and 12 weeks for life coaching and i 
take the spirit and truth and I merge it together. So it's the spirit in the natural. And I take the things of the kingdom and the things of the world and I merge it together. And I release the kingdom into people's lives into helping them discover their true identity, their divine destiny, and all that God's called them to walk into. Um, and this is my daily walk. This is what I do. I've done this for so many years. Um, you know, I've been a believer. Gosh, I got saved originally when I was seven years old. I had a very incredible, miraculous um, uh, encounter. I've had encounters since I was four. I met Jesus when I was four years old. Uh, he told me uh, he put his arms out. I was on a swing set. He put his arms out. I can tell you exactly what he looked like. He had holes in his feet, his hands. He had his hands out and he said, he said, beloved, I've called you to be a world changer. I've called you to change the world. And from that day on, I would go to school and I would draw the globe in kindergarten and I would put little children of different colors all over. And they would tell my mom that I would tell, I would tell the teachers I wanted to be a world changer. Wow. And they, my teachers would tell my mom, there's something special about this child. We don't understand her, but she loves culture. She loves diversity. <laughs> she loves people, but there's something different about her. And uh, yeah, so lo and behold, you know, it, it, you know, God has done some miraculous things. And I just, uh, you know, go all over the world and do different things. I have actually my first, I don't know if you saw it. Um, I'm doing my first International Women's Summit. Uh, oh, cool. In the Middle East, in the Middle East, yes. Well, tell us about that. In the Middle East, yeah. What's that? Tell us about that. Yeah. Well, the Lord's. I had. I was driving um, back in November, and uh, I had been asked to speak in Pakistan different times, and I've turned so many down. I just turn them down, and uh, I don't know which one to go with and one one's not to, and I just you know because sometimes I don't want the warfare. And um, so uh, the, I was on an interview and uh, I left the, my house afterwards and I was driving, I got taken into a vision. And when I got taken into this vision, I saw all these women, uh, these Muslim women, they were in the streets uh, and they had, um, you know, their, their garb on and everything. And, uh, I, I, and, and they were crying and they were wailing. And they were looking up and I said, God, what is going on here? And I saw Jesus appear. And when Jesus appeared to them, I saw the women look up and there was like a natural disaster that was going on. Something had happened. It was an earthquake or something. It was something drastic. And I looked in as Jesus' eyes, the eyes of Jesus of fire, of there were blue flames of fire, which I've seen many times. And they caught the eyes of the woman. And when they caught the eyes of the woman, it changed and what happened was love began to pour into her and i watched as love begin to pour into her she began to take off her 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 mask and the other women started taking off because it was like resonating not just through her but it was going all throughout the ground it was going all throughout them and i heard the lord say lebanon and i said lebanon and he said beloved he said i am going to make an appearance just as I made to Mary, I am going to make an appearance to the women of the Middle East. And I said, oh, okay. And I said, well, what do you want me to do about this, Lord? I said, well, I can't really go right now. They want me to come and do crusade, but I can't go right now. But what can I do? And he said, use your creativity and your ingenuity. And I was like, okay. And so I, um, I came home and I contacted uh, one of the leaders, one of the generals in Pakistan uh, who holds massive crusades of millions of people. And I said, um, I would love to hold a women's summit. Would you be interested in helping, hosting? And he said, yes. And so I prayed and I asked the Lord exactly who he wanted, uh, who flowed in healing and deliverance and inner healing and restoration of the heart and of the soul. And uh, so I put this event together for January 2nd. Um, it will be, you know, we will have a psalmist, uh, one of my good friends from San Diego, California, but I have prophets, I have apostles, teachers, uh, pastors, <laughs> the whole kit and caboodle, the whole five, five, 
fivefold that yeah. will be ministering to these women. And we have uh, 400 women that will be on site that day, that will be on site at the church that day, as well as that will be aired around the world. And so um, extremely excited. And then we'll be taking these summits from nation to nation. That's incredible. Uh, the Lord told me to go. Yeah, yeah. The Lord told me to go to different nations. He said, yeah, I'm going to send you people that speak the language. And um, I'm going to send you leaders around. And I want you to just pour in love, love, mm. love, restoration and love and redemption. And I just want you to pour into my people because they need it now. He said, my yeah. people are sick and they're dying for a lack of knowledge. You're perishing. And I said, what do you mean by that, Lord? He said, because they don't know me. No. They don't know my true heart. He said, they know Jesus and they know of God, but they don't know of the Holy Spirit. He said, and I want you to pour out my love in a way that they've never been taught, that religion has never taught them before, that it'll break down every stronghold of religion and tradition that anybody has ever been taught. And it's like, basically, I say it like this, John, I feel like I'm wrapping my arms around the whole world, like he's got the whole world in his hands, just yeah. like when I was a little girl. And so, yeah, that's what a little that's, bit about what I'm doing. Yeah, no, I really appreciate you sharing that. If, uh, if the, anything like the people who are listening to this, who are going to be encouraged by the wonderful, miraculous testimonies you shared, the women in Pakistan and these other nations are certainly going to be blessed by your ministry and the other people, the men and women of God who you're bringing along to, to minister to them and see salvations and see breakthroughs and see deliverances and see healings. I'm very excited to hear the testimonies of those occurrences when they, when you come back from that trip. But, uh, I want to encourage yeah. everybody who's watched us today to follow yeah, Michelle. Do it online. It's all, it's all online it's a women's summit online but it's going all over the world okay so where where can they watch it at um it'll be on facebook live on your facebook victorious on michelle facebook yeah yes so Vic victorious michelle is the facebook page you can go find her uh, yes. victorious michelle.com is her website uh go seek her out if you're looking for some of the things that she's offering through her ministry or just to follow and see what she's doing as far as praying for the sick and seeing these miraculous testimonies because they can be an encouragement to anybody who is saying, well, maybe that's not real. Maybe it's not uh, for me. And I don't really know if that really happened out there. Well, if it is, and we've got the testimonies to prove it, I say that we should be lifting up our faith and saying <laughs> glory to God in the meantime. So uh, Michelle, I want to say thank you for joining us on the program today. Your testimonies will encourage and inspire. Well, thank you so much for your time. And I just want to say to everyone here, let your faith arise and your enemies will scatter. And just know that when you rule and reign from a seated place of victory, that all authority and all dominion belongs to you because Christ in you is the hope of glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Thanks, Michelle, for being with us today. Thank you so much, John. And God bless everyone. Another amazing testimony, signs, wonders, miracles, eyes growing back, kids raised from the dead. I hope that this testimony has been encouragement to you wherever you are today, wherever you're at in your walk with Christ. If you're looking for faith in the area of knowing that God provides signs and wonders still today on the earth, I want to pray for you today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to seek your word and to know your word is truth. And we know by your word, Lord, that Matthew, Mark's, Mark 16 and other places talk about the signs and wonders that will be done by believers. It talks about how greater works will be done by those who believe than were done even by Jesus, the Bible says. And we're thankful for the opportunity to see signs and wonders take place right here, right now on this earth, through your people, through the power of the Holy Spirit inside of them. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for those things. We pray that you would open up the eyes of those that would want to seek that out in their lives or to see you move through them, to see you move in a way that exists reveals the Lord to them in a manifesting way where they can see healing in their own personal life or in the life of someone they know or they've met. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for revealing the truth of God's word deep inside of us that it would get out of our head and would get into our heart, Lord Jesus, that we would stop trying to rationalize and figure out 
what's going on when God moves on something. But when someone gets raised from the dead, that can't be a mental thing. We can't try to figure that out. That's got to be the faith of God in our hearts saying God's in control. God can do what he needs to do, what he wants to do because he loves us. He cares for us. And he wants to put his power inside his people to do the things of God here on this earth. So we thank you for those that believe in that. And we pray for encouraging faith for those that would want to seek that out. For those that are having a hard time believing in it, Lord, we just pray. We pray for them that they would be sensitive to the Spirit and His movings in their life, and they would begin to believe in the things of God here on this earth and the things of His Word, which say signs and wonders for today are real, and we believe in them because we believe our God is true, and we believe His love for us surpasses understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for those who've watched today's episode. I'm so thankful you joined us on this program, as I say all the time, because I am. I'm so excited that so many people are watching testimonies of God's people. We want to get the testimonies that are in God's people out in the world. So we would invite you to partner with us here at Testimony House as we produce 100 testimonial videos in 2021. We're also working on a documentary. We're looking to get inside a new studio. All of these things are on our heart for the new year. We'd love for you to join us. Head over to testimonyhouse.org, our website, and click on the Give tab. You can give a one-time gift and say, I want to sow a seed into this ministry. You can also become a monthly supporter. And all, all of your gifts, all your support, all your partnership will help us to create more and more Christian content for you, your family, and to help those who are lost and help those who have found Jesus find God's plan and purpose for their life. We thank you for your partnership in advance, of course. If you're listening to this on our YouTube channel or watching this on our YouTube channel, uh, we'd like to invite you to go subscribe to our podcast, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Play Store, or you can go to testimonyhouse.podbean.com on your desktop. If you want to watch this, you can watch it on Facebook, YouTube, subscribe to our channels, like our page, Keep up to date with what we're doing this year because we have a lot of content coming out. We don't want you to miss any of it because these can't make it can't make this stuff up testimonies are sure enough because God's in them going to bless the people who listen to them. And we thank you for your time and your patience to get through this show with us because we know that it isn't always easy to t spend 30 minutes watching a show, but we know God will bless your time, redeem it in the name of Jesus. We hope it's been a blessing and we pray before we leave. Thank you, Jesus, for this time we spent together in your word hearing your story. May it encourage our faith and bless us as we move forward in the week. Until next time, guys, we pray you discover a future and a hope for your life today. We ain't trying to blend in. If you're ready, come on with us, my friend. Come on. We can change the world. Hey, hey, we can change the world. Let's go. What changes the world? The only thing that ever really changes the world is when somebody gets the idea that love can abound and can be shared.